Jay-Z, Pharrell, Diddy. Damn, are you? And me was supposed to be a group. Things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you saying? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, <laughs> and it was, but I don't know if I indulge and understand what I was even looking at. What like a, a life. Living. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to puffy camp? <laughs> Hell <know>? no. <laughs> so you won't believe the latest scoop making waves in the entertainment scene. Usher's apparently ready to spill the beans on his own roller coaster ride in the industry. And let me tell you, it's a jaw dropper. The grapevine's buzzing with rumors that he's not holding back. He's about to spill some serious tea involving none other than the big shots Jay-Z and Diddy. Now, it's not the first time we've heard whispers about Jay-Z and Diddy being in the middle of some drama. I mean, Diddy's practically got a collection of lawsuits against him, and we've seen others come forward with their own tales, whether they're all true or not. Surprisingly, it seems like these rumors have become part of the background noise in the industry. People are no longer shocked to hear about Jay-Z and Diddy being involved in some eyebrow-raising situations, even though it still blows their minds that it's supposedly happening. Now here comes Usher, a big wig in the industry, allegedly ready to spill the details on his own survival story after a supposed showdown with Jay-Z and Diddy. Anyways, let's get into it. Now Shannon Sharp is making serious waves in the podcast game on YouTube, and everyone's hooked to see who he's bringing on next. The recent guest list has been nothing short of legendary. Recently, Usher took the mic on the podcast and spilled some piping hot tea. Get ready for this. So, Shannon asked Usher about any missed collabs, and when Usher dropped the bomb about Jay-Z, Farrell, and Diddy planning to form a group, you can imagine the collective gasp. Shannon, being the straight shooter he is, dug in, asking why it never went down. Usher revealed that it wasn't a flat-out no from him, but it wasn't a resounding yes, either. He spilled the beans about secret meetings, discussions on flipping the music game, and the business side of it. Yet somehow they got caught up in the whirlwind of distractions, and the dream collab evaporated into thin air. Usher admitted that out of all the what-ifs, that's the one he wishes had happened. Now here's where it gets interesting. While this revelation might seem harmless on the surface, the rumor mill is working over time, suggesting there might be more to the story. Some folks are speculating that Usher's decision to pass on the group might have deeper reasons, perhaps linked to those infamous freak-offs. You know, the ones tied to the rumors about Diddy's wild parties and some not-so-savory activities involving, well, you get the gist. Now let's be real. These are just rumors, but they're gaining traction. People are connecting the dots and wondering if there's more beneath the surface of Usher's decision. In case it slipped your mind, back in the 90s, Diddy ran this thing called Puffy Flavor Camp. It was basically a deal for young, up-and-coming stars to get some mentorship from him. And let me tell you, the stories these celebs spill about their time in Puffy Flavor Camp are jaw-dropping. One of the kids who got a taste of this flavor camp was Usher. Usher was set to be an R&B sensation from a super young age. He spilled the beans in 2016, telling Howard that he really got a grip on what being famous meant after spending a year living with Puff Daddy when he was just 14. I got a chance to see some things. I went there to see the lifestyle and I saw it, Usher said during his first Stern Show interview. We're sending New you over to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> some Flavor Camp. Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's going to In the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? So, Usher's one of a kind learning experience, known as Puffy Flavor Camp, happened because a young Usher wowed music bigwig L.A. Reed with his musical skills. Next thing you know, he's jetting off to New York to crash with Puffy during the golden era of Bad Boy Records, all in the name of getting the real deal scoop on making it big in the music scene. It was pretty wild. It was crazy, Usher said, while rattling off some of the biggest names in hip hop who were a constant presence at Puffy's house, including Notorious Big, Lil' Kim, Faith Evans, Mary J. Blige, and Craig Mack. I was like the little brother, they called me Baby Boo, Usher spilled. But Howard was curious if there were any ground rules for him since, you know, he was just a kid. He wasn't disciplinary, he was letting me be a young man, Usher shared with Howard. Even though he wasn't hitting the books in a regular school, they had a tutor around. And about that cash flow, Usher said he got a per diem, but just enough to keep him out of too much mischief. So when it was time to drop Usher's first album, Diddy took on the role of producer. But when the debut didn't exactly set the charts on fire, Puffy decided to sit out Usher's second album, My Way, which ended up going six times platinum in the late 90s. Now, you know that saying about birds of a feather flocking together, right? Well, let's dive into the grapevine chatter that's been swirling around Jay-Z and Diddy for what feels like forever. The rumors about Jay-Z and Diddy being involved in some less than savory activities have been persistent. 
From backstage whispers to hush-hush talks in the industry corridors, these tales have been circulating like wildfire. Diddy, in particular, has had his fair share of spotlight on the not-so-flattering aspects of his life, thanks to a string of lawsuits. It's like the universe decided to hit him with a reality check, exposing some of the less glamorous facets of his journey. As for Jay-Z, well, the rumors about his potential involvement in questionable affairs have been lingering in the air for a while. Before we jump into the nitty-gritty of the alleged not-so-honorable deeds, let's take a quick stroll down the memory lane of their friendship. These two have been in each other's orbits for a long time, part of the same constellation of hip-hop royalty. Diddy spilled the tea in an interview not too long ago, letting us in on just how close he and Jay-Z are. It all went down during one of those chill carpool karaoke sessions with James Corden. You know, the one where they chat and sing while cruising around. So Corden, being the inquisitive host that he is, was curious about how to address the man of many names. Diddy, Puffy, Love, you name it. Diddy, being the master of reinvention, walked us through his name evolution. But when Corden wondered why Sean wasn't on the list, Diddy dropped some knowledge. Turns out, Sean is reserved for only two special people, his mom and the one and only Jay-Z. According to Diddy, calling him Sean is a VIP privilege, and Corden didn't quite make the cut for those Sean privileges. It's like an exclusive club, and Jay-Z has the golden ticket. Also, there's still a photo of Jay-Z on Diddy's website, and Diddy's been giving Jay major props for stepping into the shoes of legends like Biggie and Tupac. Back in 2022, during a Twitter space celebration for Biggie's 50th birthday on Tidal, Diddy couldn't stop singing Jay's praise Phrases, especially for holding down the rap scene after we lost Biggie and Pac. He said, bro, you filled them shoes though. You came in and we definitely give thanks. You definitely came and I just know how much Big really looked up to Jay. And remember when Jay-Z teamed up with the NFL and caught some heat? Diddy had his back, supporting him in public. He hopped on Instagram to say, Hav is one of the greatest to ever do it. He has been there for more than anybody from the hip hop culture, including me. He has always been so selfless and fights for other people. People. We as a people cannot be divided and conquered at this time. Seems like there's some serious bromance going on. Jay-Z even narrated a video montage for Diddy's Lifetime Achievement Award at the 2022 BT Awards, calling him an inspiration to all those kids starting from scratch. Now, back to the murkier side of things. Whispers in the rumor mill hint at alleged all-male gatherings that have kept tongues wagging. 50 Cent, always the playful provocateur, couldn't resist poking fun at Jay-Z, suggesting he was channeling artist Basquiat, who had diverse dating preferences. There's a playful jab about Jay not just copying Basquiat's hairstyle, but maybe trying to emulate his openness to both men and women. And then there's the ongoing saga of 50 Cent playfully ribbing Diddy for years. The shade has been real, with 50 dropping hints about Diddy possibly being on the down low. He even went so far as to suggest that Diddy might have tried to make a move on him, claiming a seemingly innocent shopping spree offer might have had some hidden agenda beyond just buying stuff. Like we could just hang out. Nigga, we gotta, we gotta kick it. This is possible. Okay. You're telling me we gotta kick it and shit. And he's like, right. yo, why don't we like go shopping or some shit? I mean, like, I pay for it. And I was like, what the this <laughs> just say? <laughs> now, 50 is cranking up the speculation with a new post. He shared a clip from Screamfest 07, his tour with T.I. in the video. We see Diddy and Jay-Z performing alongside the headliners. Just as Jay starts encore, Diddy gives him a few playful smacks on the backside. So, is this all hinting at some wild times together? 50 had to come back out and make my show hot. I so appreciate it. No, to Rockefeller show motherfucking city. 20 machine guns only get 10 months Diddy in the back, Patton on end butts, 50 Cent wrote in the caption, referencing T.I.'s 2007 arrest on gun charges. Nah, I ain't with it, I ain't never been with it. So, 50 Cent might just be stirring the pot again, but fans are starting to say, you're the company you keep. I mean, if Jay-Z and Diddy have been tight for so long, maybe there's more to their connection than meets the eye. And let's talk about commonalities. It seems like those in their inner circles often end up facing some pretty tragic outcomes. Rumor has it that Jay-Z and Diddy might have sacrificed people along the way to boost their own careers. There's talk that they could be tied to the deaths of several rappers. It's all a bit eerie, isn't it? Now, the rap scene back in the 90s was no joke. Cutthroat vibes everywhere. Everybody wanted to be on top, and it was all about survival. You had gangster personas left and right, and nobody wanted to be caught slipping. According to 50 Cent, some rappers were ready to do anything, and I mean anything, to climb that ladder, even if it meant taking out the competition. Now, you've probably heard 
heard the rumors about Jay-Z and Diddy facing Illuminati allegations, right? People suspect they've been involved in some shady stuff, maybe even sacrificing other rappers to the Illuminati to boost their own careers. And when we talk about shady stuff around Jay-Z, Coolio's name pops up, right? So last year on a random Wednesday, Coolio passed away at a friend's place in LA. He went to the bathroom and when his friend checked in, he found Coolio out cold on the floor. Paramedics confirmed he didn't make it. Now for months, the deets on Coolio's death were a mystery. People suspected a heart thing given his health battles. But here's the kicker. Some folks, including Coolio's crew and family, knew he had some health issues, but others started pointing fingers at Jay-Z and Diddy. Why? Coolio did interviews hinting he might spill some industry tea, exposing shady folks. People thought Jay and Diddy had to silence him before he spilled the beans. Later, authorities said Coolio had undiagnosed heart problems, leading to his passing. But that didn't stop the whispers about Jay-Z and Diddy being Illuminati hitmen. It's wild, right? And hey, this isn't the first time folks throw shade at Diddy and Jay-Z. Some even think they are tied to Biggie's death, with supposed evidence. That's crazy because Jay-Z and Biggie were known to be buddies, but the rumors are swirling that because Jay-Z wanted to be on top, he supposedly asked Diddy for help in taking out his friend. Now I know it sounds like some wild conspiracy, but let's break it down. Think about it. Jay-Z sure did ride the wave of success after Biggie's tragic death, right? And it's not just the fans speculating on this. Even Cassidy spilled the tea in an interview, confirming that there might be some truth to the idea that Jay-Z benefited big time from Biggie's demise. The host throws a question question at Cassidy, asking if Biggie and Pat kicking the bucket kind of paved the way for Jay-Z, and Cassidy hits back saying nah, Jay was already in the game, especially with his killer debut album, Reasonable Doubt. That's Cassidy's personal fave. But here's the twist, Cassidy thinks it was a business move. But here's the twist, Cassidy thinks it was a business move. Big and Pac had everyone's attention, making it a tough road for Jay-Z to claim the title of the best in the game. It would have been a real challenge if Pac had stuck around, you know what I mean? Cassidy points out that there were other super talented artists in the mix, and with Big and Pac in the scene, it was a competitive battleground. Once Big and Pac were out of the picture, it was kinda like a clear path for Jay-Z and Nas to duke it out for the top spot. Cassidy spills the beans on how the rap game shifted gears after Biggie and Pac's departure. Jay-Z didn't have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those heavyweights anymore, because Biggie and Pac were out of the picture. You know what I mean? Big and Pac had everybody attention, so it was hard for him to become Jay-Z, like, the best, the top, like, you know what I mean? Nobody could with them like it would have been different if they was around and you that's why you see them go through what they went through because he got to fight for that position but he didn't have to like fight with Pac or Big no more because they wasn't around. Now let's get into the scoop on how folks are saying Diddy might have played a role in helping Jay-Z take out Biggie. Lil Cease, Biggie's right-hand guy, just spilled the beans on the legend's death and it's giving us serious chills. Picture this, they're in the car and Lil Cease spills the details on a moment that makes us seriously side-eye Diddy. He spills about how, in a crucial moment, Diddy allegedly decides not to stop at a red light. Seems like a small detail, right? But hold up, this apparently innocent choice is getting real shady, throwing a whole lot of doubt on what went down that fateful night. Lil Cease's revelation has us questioning Diddy's intentions and adds a spooky layer to the whole mystery surrounding Biggie's untimely exit. It's like a real-life thriller unfolding. We get out, Puff pull out first. We pull out behind him. He blow past the light. We stopped at the light. Before you know it, a car just rolled up, start popping in the car. Didn't say nothing, didn't yell nothing. Just pop, 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 pop. Everybody got down in the truck. Peeling back more layers here, there were whispers going around that Biggie was thinking of ditching Bad Boy Records. Now, if you throw that into the mix, it spices up the whole story. Which brings us to the burning question. Did this decision to peace out stir something up in Diddy's head, making him think about doing the unimaginable? Diving deeper into this crazy story, another player steps up, making things even more twisted. Gene Deal, a former bodyguard of Diddy, spilled the tea and added a darker vibe to the whole Biggie saga. So, in this interview, Deal starts questioning why Diddy called Biggie to LA. According to him, there's no legit reason for that call, making us wonder if it was all part of some shady plan. The idea that Diddy had Biggie venture into sketchy territory without a clear purpose adds a seriously creepy layer to the already mysterious story. But wait, it gets weirder. Deal noticed something fishy about the cars involved. He says they were covered in eye-catching stickers. And here's the thing. Only the street team hired by Bad Boy Records had the chance to mess with those rides. Deal claims that this street team was in the perfect spot to slap on those suspicious stickers. And you may ask, what about Puff Daddy's car? 
totally sticker free. Now, if that doesn't amp up the suspicion, I don't know what does. He had no business in LA at that time. We all knew that. Why would Puff rent studio time? Those cars was rented. So to put those stickers on there, you defacing the property. He said that this went and got his own deal. Look at the balls he had. He went and got his own record label, his own deal. Adding more fuel to the fire, Deal spilled that he suggested beefing up security to prevent potential threats. But his advice apparently got brushed off. This just makes the whole mystery around Biggie's death even murkier. Things in the story get pretty intense, right? It's like we're hit with this dark twist, toying with the idea that Biggie's fate was set in stone long before that tragic moment. Here's the real head scratcher. Was Biggie set up to be a pawn in some big game played by the power players in the music business? You know, maybe even by Diddy and Jay-Z? Just throwing that out there. They should have had better security. I asked them, let's hire some more security. They refused to hire more security. But guys, it's not over yet. Hold on to your hats because the bombshells keep coming. Jaguar Wright, a soulful voice in the game, dropped a perspective that had the whole hip-hop community shook. In an interview, Jaguar Wright digs even deeper into the twists and turns of this crazy story. She's throwing out there that Biggie's death wasn't just some tragic accident. It might have been a calculated move that played into the hands of Diddy and Bad Boy Records. Wright straight up suggests that the downfall of the rap legend could have been a strategic move benefiting the big shots in the music business. She says, Puffy has been making money off of Biggie's name for longer than Biggie was alive. People keep forgetting. He hadn't turned 25 yet, he was still 24 when he died. It's been over 25 years, effing Puffy has been making money on that boy's name longer than he lived. It supported all of Bad Boy. His catalog, clearly a Biggie small verse is very valuable. She vents the commission. What happened to that album? It was recorded. It was being mixed and mastered upon Biggie's death. It was supposed to have come out that summer after Biggie's album cause Biggie's album was slated. He died a week and a half before his album came out. Then, the commission was supposed to come out and that was supposed to be his exit from Bad Boy N, then starting his own company. So tell me something, I think everybody that knows Sean Carter knows that he will slump anyone in any relationship for a dollar. It's been over 25 years. Puffy has been making money on that boy's name longer than he lived. And that's not even the wildest part. Jaguar saying everyone who came up in the game with Jay-Z and Diddy? Yeah, according to her, they've somehow ended up six feet under, all for Jay and Diddy to rise to where they are today. It's like a crazy plot twist, but Jaguar's making it sound like the grim reality behind the glitz and glamour. The rap game's got layers, and it's getting real messy. Bringing some serious spookiness into the Diddy saga, she dives into the eerie number of deaths connected to him, especially during the Uptown Records days. Check this out. Uptown Records kicks off with five folks. Andre Harrell, Al B. Schur, Heavy D, Puffy, and Kim, who was there from day one, Andre's right hand. Now Kim's gone, Heavy D's gone, and Andre Harrell's gone too. The only two left standing are Puffy and Al, and Al even had a close call. Crazy, right? Andre Harrell is dead. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost died. Isn't that interesting? Jaguar doesn't stop there. She drops a bomb about everyone having something in common. The survivors and those who've passed from Uptown Records, they were all getting ready to spill the tea. Andre had a book in the works. Heavy D was gearing up for a tell-all. Kim was working on her story. And Al B was putting together a documentary. And then he lands in a coma. Jaguar's wondering out loud, has Puffy ever been in a coma? Has anything happened to him? She's throwing out the notion that Puffy might just be the luckiest person alive, considering everyone else from the Uptown Records crew crew is gone or had some close calls. It's like a real-life mystery novel, and Jaguar's got the pen. But wait, she's not done. As for Jay-Z, she throws it back to the early days, reminiscing about a street battle in New York where Jay-Z first caught her ears. But here's the kicker. He wasn't there as the Jay-Z we know. He was rolling with Big L, the guy who put him on the map. Then, tragically, Big L kicks the bucket, and suddenly Jay-Z rises. He showed up as the nigga that was with Big L. Yes. Big L was who put Jay-Z on. Without question. And then Big L died and in the next thing you know. Then there's the whispers about him having a hand in Aliyah's passing. Now Aliyah was like Beyonce's competition, much like Tupac and Biggie were to Jay-Z. Some folks are even spinning rumors that Jay might have played a role in Aliyah's passing to boost Beyonce to a higher status. Now there's was this comparison game titled Aliyah versus Beyonce. Look at the names, Aliyah, meaning the highest, most exalted one versus Beyonce, meaning one who is beyond others. 
It's like two queens vying for the throne, right? They were once friends, but here's where the Illuminati conspiracy kicks in. Aaliyah, the season quadruple threat, paved the way for Beyonce's stardom before tragically passing away. Aaliyah had dreams, modeling, singing, dancing, acting, even eyeing roles in The Matrix and Sparkle. Fast forward, and Beyonce seems to be following Aaliyah's footsteps. So, Aaliyah was gaining fans worldwide, but the Illuminati reportedly saw her as a green light and wanted her to join their ranks. However, she resisted, and as history suggests with figures like Michael Jackson and DMX, refusing the Illuminati can lead to a tarnished image and ultimately, demise. Aaliyah began learning more about the Illuminati and Freemasons through her associations, realizing her life might be in danger. She even mentioned a dream in an interview weeks before her death, describing a dark dream where someone was after her, and suddenly she lifted off feeling free and weightless. Some speculate this could symbolize death. In the weeks leading to her tragic plane crash, Aaliyah recorded an unfinished song called Time. The lyrics express a sentiment of not having enough time to do everything. Interestingly, Jay-Z released a remix of Aaliyah's I Miss You after her death, mentioning that she used to read Seed of the Soul, a book about opening one's third eye. Adding to the intrigue, right after shooting the More Than a Woman video, Aaliyah received a call to fly immediately to the Bahamas for the Rock the Boat video. The the situation seemed oddly aligned with the theme of her unfinished song, Time, suggesting a mysterious connection. According to some theories, Aliyah might have resisted joining the Illuminati or wanted out of it, leading to her being replaced by someone who would adhere to their agenda, Beyonce. This theory suggests that Aliyah's unwillingness to comply or her desire to exit the Illuminati program could have led to her demise. The narrative draws parallels between the names Aliyah, highest most exalted one, and Beyonce, one who is beyond others and implies that Jay-Z played a role in this alleged conspiracy. Also, Kanye West brought up Diddy, Jay-Z, and Beyonce while discussing the influence of powerful entities over fellow celebrities, and even said that he can say whatever he wants and not go to jail. I can say whatever I want and not go to jail, Ye tells the camera. They can't control me. You get what I'm saying? They can control Shaq. They can control Charles Barkley. They can control LeBron James. They can control Jay-Z and Beyonce. But they can't control me. You see, it ain't no name I won't name. It's up. Ye then brought up his deceased mother, claiming she was sacrificed, before adding, I'm the P that never K nobody, but that means I can say whatever I want. My mama ain't here. My mama was sacrificed. You can't send none of y'all Meek Mills, y'all Puffies, y'all Lil Boozies, none of these names, none of these people that have to listen to y'all. I never K nobody. I'm the P that never nobody, but that means I can say whatever I want. They can control LeBron James. They can control Jay-Z and Beyonce. But not you, man. But they can't control me. You see, you. it ain't no name I won't name. Exactly. It's up. I can't send none of y'all meat mills, y'all puffies, y'all little boozy, none of these names. None of these people that have to listen to y'all because they're dealing with, they have legal, I never nobody, right? I'm the pussy that never nobody, right? But that means I can say whatever I want and not go to jail. He then goes on to mention Michael Jordan's father, insinuating that the basketball legend's dad was similarly sacrificed. Now, whether Kanye's claims hold any truth or if he's stirring the pot remains uncertain. This adds another layer to the complexities of the music industry. And as more stories emerge, it becomes increasingly disturbing. Well guys, it looks like Jay-Z and Diddy might just have a bunch of questionable stuff in common. And that's apparently the glue keeping their friendship intact. But I wanna know what you guys think of all this. Write your thoughts in the comment and we'll catch you in the next video.